the surgery and she's in going to be in recovery but she's going to be in recovery for a while so covered her in your prayers yeah 99 she didn't look 99 but <clears throat> well, remember her brother Art and others brother Ed and John and Willa and my and Carol, there's quite a few of us that are <clears throat> of our family that are still on beds of illness. Well, in case you didn't notice by all the songs we sing, there's a kind of a theme to everything, and it's that four-letter word, L-O-V-E. The title of the message this morning is The Gift of Love, and we'll be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That surprised. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13 this morning. As I was going through all this, this is going to be a two-part. You'll get part one today and one's part two next Sunday. There's just too much truth to just run through it and go an overview. We're actually going to uh, be picking each and every aspect of these first 13 verses apart. 1 Corinthians 13, the first 13 verses, we're going to read them all, so... Stretch your legs one more time, and I'll ask you to stand as we honor the reading of God's Word. There's a lot of truth in here, and I think this really will apply to where we're at socially today as far as what's, as what's going on. 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity, chari charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fall. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be, where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Father, we thank you for your precious word. And I pray as we search the scriptures, Lord, that your spirit would speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. We've all heard that song by Don Owen, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And just that short little statement alone ought to give you a, a picture that if you can say that but do you do you believe it do you believe it to the point where it's it's something rock solid that you stand on and it will not fail for a christian that's true but the, my thought or my quick challenge this morning is do you sometimes step off the foundation do we take the word, words that say god is good all the time and do we kind of toss around that word all? Or do we throw in most of the time or some of the time? Or even the, the other words that we I dread, uh, it depends. 
You ever say, oh, it depends. No, none of those things, when God is good all the time and all the time is good, God is good, uh, th- that's not in there. It's not part of it. And so my prayer and my, my hope during this time is we, we're going to be looking at 13 verses. And we're going to be picking these apart individually in, in pieces. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of like the, uh, even though we can't do buffets, it's like a buffet where everything is going to be lined up before you and you have the opportunity of picking up each, each and every part of what's in the buffet line. 13 verses, and there's a lot of things to look at. You can get to choose which, which of these you want to embrace. And you might be some that you say, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to do that. Well, God gave us a free will. You were forgiven, were forgiven on the cross. And will he allow us to disagree? Sure. But any time we go against what the Word of God says and His truth, we what? There could be consequences. I'm not saying what they are, but there could be consequences and normally is. But God has truly been good to His children. He's given us more than we, any of us deserve because He gave us this only begotten Son. That's more than any of us deserve. And He's provided a means of salvation that will save Anyone, there we go. There's that word. All, anyone, inclusive. And if if I want you to get one point into this about this of love, it's all inclusive. Nobody's outside of the love of God. That's that song we sing, the love of God. Well, there's there's no one outside of that. Now I could go through some of the promises that are tied in, in tied into this as a child of God, but we'd be here till the cows came home. So just I'm going to give you three short ones and I'm going to give you abbreviated. I'll give you a scripture text, a location, but I'm just going to sum it up in a few words. But Hebrews 13, 5 reminds us of a promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Pretty good promise because he loves us so much. Philippians 4, 9, 10, 19 says he'll supply most of your needs. No, he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's because he loves us so much. How about John 20, 10, 28? I give you eternal life that you will never perish and no one is able to pluck you out of my hand. Those are all things of promises that we can say well, that's all a direct result that that's how much God loves me. We sang that one, Jesus loves me, but you can sing the other one. They both apply. When you say Jesus loves me, make it personal. He loves each and every human being. But what's so much has so much more of an impact when you, not only do you realize that Jesus loves me, but then he becomes your savior. When he's your savior, it takes it to a, a level that's out of this world. I'll just say out of this world. And when you were saved as a child of God, you were given spiritual gifts, supernatural gifts. I'll even go on to say they can use for his work. Not going to say a whole lot, but do you know what it is? And if you know what it is, are you following through? Are you utilizing and using the gift that He's given you, a supernatural gift, to live out in this world? That's a question that's between not I, I, it's between you and Him. Because <clears throat> if you're using it, you'll you'll know you'll know. <clears throat> but I think it's plain to see that God is has been, is, and will be good to us. Jeremiah 13, 31, 3 tells us that the love of God for his people is, use the word everlasting, use the word eternal. It's going to be forever. Once, once you become a child of God, you have access to all of who he is, Fruit of the Spirit, one fruit, nine flavors. And guess what? When you think of the fruit of the Spirit, what is the first fruit of the Spirit? Love. First one. It's the basis of all the other ones. They're all important. But without, as we looked in the first few verses of chapter 13, you can do anything and all these different things of service. But if there's love's not in it, it's worthless 
worthless. In the day that this was written in the church of Corinth, there, they were utilizing the spiritual gifts that God had given them except for one. They were not showing love one to another. And that's why this was written. If you look at chapters 12, 13, and 14, they're, they're basically like a short story. You can't... 12, 13, and 14 are, are together. You can't separate them. And in the original text, it was, they were, they were, it was all one unit. And it is a call for more Christ-likeness and maturity in the midst of childless, childish and fleshly living goes back to the whole what's the battle the battle is not in flesh and blood but against what spiritual wickedness in high places it's a spiritual battle that we're living in today we get to see the, the physical aspects of it but ultimately we're just seeing the result of the spiritual warfare that's going on and it's not just little battles here and there it's an all out war because if the death of one man can cause that much terminal ter- that much trouble encompassing in what? An entire planet. It's a spiritual battle. But then we, we look at one man who died on an old rugged cross. And what did his death do? It changed the world. So one man's death can cause trouble, but one man's death caused, gave us a way to be reconciled to God. So this morning we're going to look at one and a half points. Because the second point, we ain't getting through it. Especially now, just with the introductions. Number one, the primacy of love. The primacy of love. The whole idea of the first three verses is that love is superior to anything else and everything else that we can do. Look with me in verse 1. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So first of all, the primacy of love is superior to the sensational. You can be a a world-class speaker, but there's no substitute for love. No matter how great your oratory, no how beautiful you you can present your words, even how brilliant you are with what you say, if if all of that is, there's no love involved in it, especially the kind of love chapter 13 is talking about, the love of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God living in here, uh, you could preach the greatest message on the planet, but without the Spirit of God behind it, it's just words. It's just words. And without word, without love, it's simply a, it's just noise. You could go over here and, and start banging on that cymbal and it wouldn't take long for you to get sick and tired of hearing it, would you? It may have sounded good at the start, but after a while, if that's all it is, it'll get old really quick, wouldn't it? And pretty soon it's like, uh. And that's the same thing about <coughs> speech or, or words the tongues of men and of angels and if there's no the spirit of love isn't behind it it's just like me going over there and banging on that symbol and pretty soon you're going to throw me out the door <coughs> we've all read and heard people that's, that's, that have spoken great words and it, it moves in here doesn't it we've all heard things testimonies and speeches that have but but if if they weren't based in love if real especially as a christian they weren't there wasn't the supernatural spirit of god behind it what would happen to that feeling or that motivation it'd just be kind of like like this and then it just kind of what goes like that but every time we read certain scriptures you're just boom immediately you're uh, man that's a wonderful verse and it, if it gets, sometimes it can get better every time you read it again and again and again. The bottom line is this. There were the same instruments used in heathen worship. Therefore, a person who exercises tongue 
in a spiritual fashion yet does not do so with the love of God in him, it's worthless. To the, to the sensational. But then verse 2 goes on to say to the spectacular. It says, And though I have the gift of, prof, gift of prophecy and understand, even that goes on to say, all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, it says, I am nothing. The spectacular, again, is something... It's like a fireworks display. They call it what? A fireworks spectacular, don't they? And when you're watching and everybody is just like, whoa, it's really something. But what happens when it's done? The sky's dark. A bunch of smoke in the air. It's just, it's... Poof. And that's, that's kind of what this is saying here, that you could have all that, those great fireworks, but... When it comes to an end, it comes to an end and nothing. Just darkness and smoke. All the beauty's gone out of it. And that's what that's kind of saying about if love's not in it, that's, again, how long it'll last. Be as spectacular as it could be, but still worthless. Verse 3. Now we talk about even, we've gone from the, the sensational to the spectacular. Now we're going to go one step further into the sacrificial. And it says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, that's pretty much sacrifice, isn't it? And then it says, And have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. We could, you could give away everything your own. You could even sacrifice your life for somebody. But if it's done without the love of God in your heart, it's, what does it say? It profiteth me nothing. Hmm. Kind of a picture of, of Peter when he made that promise to God that he'd die for him and yet didn't take much for him to change his coat, did it? Even the sacrificial, if it do, isn't done in the name or for the glory of God, nothing now James really presses upon he says you know faith without works is dead we we're, we're, we are to be all those things I've talked about but it has to have the supernatural love of God behind it you have got to basically step out of the way and let God do the work it's kind of Oswald Chambers kind of touched on the things that sometimes we think these are important and these are things that, are, that, that we ought to do but it has to be all done for the glory of God or it's it's nothing. So point number one, the primacy of love. Number two, this is four, verses 4 through 12 and again, we'll break this up into two parts but secondly, the portrait of love. I'm going to paint a picture this morning. And in these verses, the Apostle Paul gives an in-depth description of really what love is. He reveals the characteristics of love and these truths need to be is, is we need constant reminders of this of, of what love is because the world today is, and Satan today is trying to get us to forget those things. Especially when we get into the little you're going to find pieces and parts of in your daily existence now that ah, uh, yeah that's what the scriptures does say but that's not what I'm practicing and it's not because not practicing is as a child of God you have the right, right foundation it's what we're choosing and what we're listening to that counts the most so first of all <laughs> out of the portrait of love love's priorities not priorities properties we want to look at the, what makes this up starting in verse number 4 and we'll kind of look at this in pieces but it starts out where it says charity suffereth long and that word means here it is patient endurance under provocation patient endurance under, provoca under provocation that means when someone's coming up there and ready to hit you with a baseball bat 
Should you defend yourself? Sure. But then should you draw your 38 and go kaboom? No. But you'd want to. And sometimes you might have to. I'm just saying. But here, it means patient endurance under provocation. The literal re meaning of the word is long-tempered. How many of us are long-tempered? Not very many of us. But this characteristic of love reveals the truth that love does not retaliate. We're going to look at some verses, but I'm going to give you kind of a, a synopsis. If you look, who was the first martyr? That was Stephen. And you think Stephen had every right to retaliate. Yes, he did. But what did he do? What did he say? He said the same thing that Jesus Christ said on the cross. He says to what? Forgive them for they know not what they do. Hmm. And people that are out there doing all the lawless stuff, they're doing exactly what Satan wants them to do. They don't know any better. They can't understand the things of God because the Bible says they're spiritually discerned. So, so for us to literally point a finger of judgment, they're doing exactly what Satan wants and what's natural. And if we were willing to look back in our own lives, how far away were we from doing a similar thing? Maybe not as a group, but how about individually? You ever done something to an individual that, <clears throat> that you wanted to get even? Settle the score? Eye for an eye? For if we think about it, we've all been there, done that. And Lord willing, none of you have done it to the point where it puts you in jail. Okay, I'm just saying. But if you thought about it, if you thought about it, it's still not right. Here's another verse from Luke chapter 23, verse 34 says, <clears throat> back to like the attitude of Stephen. Then said Jesus, Father, what? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he parted his raiment and cast lots. This is when he was on the cross. Turn to Isaiah chapter 53 for a moment. Keep your finger in 1 Corinthians and turn to Isaiah chapter 53. This speaks of the kind of love that endures some attacks. No, it's the kind of love that endures all attacks. You know, often we've talked about especially uh, <clears throat> Brother Joe too has is, 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 is talked about we're, we're more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors not because we said so but because God said so. In Isaiah chapter 53 starting in verse number 4 it says this Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've all turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. And in verse 7, And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Wow. Whatever attack you find yourselves being confronted with today, and I don't know what it is, but God does. The scriptures give us on how we respond to those things. And the whole thing that we have to remind ourselves is in our own strength, we can't do it. None of it, no one here in this room can do, endure that, whatever it may be, without God's help. That's why he's given us his spirit, because we need his help in order to honor God in our responses. Well, I'm not getting very far. <clears throat> Let me give you a little illustration from Abraham Lincoln. He's got come under a, a lot of attack today because of all the things that are going on. But one of Abraham Lincoln's most outspoken political enemies was a man named Edwin J. Stanton. 
Stanton called Lincoln a, quote, low cunning clown and the, quote, original gorilla. He even said this, quote, it is ridiculous for people to go to Africa to see a gorilla when they could find one, find one easily in Springfield, Illinois. The hair raising on the back of your head about that person? Probably just a little bit. But that's not all. But to Lincoln's credit, he never responded to those insults. Yet, when he was elected president, Lincoln chose Stanton to be his secretary of war. And you might be asked the question, why? Why would he do that? And Lincoln said this, quote, because he is the best man. Later, when Lincoln had been assassinated, assassinated Stanton stood by the coffin which contained Lincoln's body and said through his tears, Remember what I just quoted before, quote, There lies the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. Unquote. Same person. But he went from a gorilla to the greatest the ruler, greatest ruler of men that the world has ever seen. Sum it up. Patient love in action won this man over in the end. Just think what if he would have responded. If he would have confronted Stanton, he might have felt better, maybe even been right and put him in his place. But guess what? Never would have been accomplished. This never would have happened. All right. Now, this could take three because we're only get through one more. Verse number four. So we, we talk about... <clears throat> Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. In that verse is a bunch of sections. First part is love is kind. Love is kind. This word refers to active, active goodness that goes forth in behalf of others. Genuine love is never to be hateful or mean but it respects others and reaches out to them. And the Word of God has a lot to say about this. And I'm going to use one example from uh, Romans chapter 2. Because this is talking about God is, was even kind to people despite their treatment of Him, even His chosen people, the Jews. Romans chapter 2, starting in verse 1 says this therefore you have no excuse every one of you who passes judgment for in that which you judge another you condemn yourself for you who judge practice the same thing and we know that the judgment of God rightly falls upon those who practice such things but suppose this O oh man when you pass judgment on those who practice such things and do the same yourself that you will escape the judgment of God mm hmm or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? It goes back to what the scripture tells us to do with our enemies. And what does it say? That to love your enemies. Pray for them. Do good to them. Just as Abraham Lincoln made an example with Stanton, we're called to do the same thing. So I think if we, I ask the question, how would you define an enemy? We wouldn't all be exactly the same definition. It depends on how, what we, how we define it in our own minds and hearts and how it's been, it showed up in our lives. But the, Mark it down. There's people that you would call an enemy. And just say people that even were B.C. before Christ versus after Christ, did your perception of that person change? They were an enemy then and they're an enemy now. It shouldn't be that way. It should be they were an enemy now. I need to make it right. Oh, they were an enemy then. I need to make it right. 
That sounds more like how it should go, shouldn't it? Think in your mind right now, in your heart right now, is there anybody you can look at today and call them an enemy that you know personally? Not the kind of stuff that's going on all around us. But personally, is there somebody that you can bring up in your mind that you would say, that's an enemy? There ought to be no one on your list. No one. Because we're reminded we were once what? Enemies of God, weren't we? And did that did he toss us aside? No. No, he gave us he gave all of mankind a, a way of reconciliation. Should be the same message for us, shouldn't it? There should be nobody on your enemy list. And if there is, then what do you need to do? You need to pray about it. Ask God to help you with it. So that you that person goes from being enemy to somebody that you have a burden for. God can do that. You and I can't. None of us can in our own strength. So what the scripture tells us, <laughs> you have fruit of the Spirit. I'm giving you all that so now you have, there is a way if you're willing to take it. We're out of time. We're out of time, and I'm still four pages away from part two. This could work into part three. If that's the case, I will take a break from this on Independence Day. We will do something special for Independence Day. Because I think it's, I don't think I can do this in one more week. But I think it's worthwhile for us to, to slow down consider what the word of God tells us and it gives us an opportunity to go spirit of God show me what you want to show me because there's we're going to have ugliness going through this and mark it down we're all going to have some ugliness going through this but then we have to remember what God is good all the time and all the time God is good amen all right. Trust me, this is as much for me as it is for you. So Brother Joe is going to come and lead us in the closing song, and I will close in prayer. I will close in prayer.